at least when I got involved in Zen, the basic idea of one's enlightenment is you see things the way they are. That's all it was sold as, basically. You just see things the way they are. That's enlightenment. That's what basically what that tradition would was saying to me that enlightenment was. You'd see things the way they are instead of seeing them the way they're not. Instead of seeing them through your clouded haze of ideas and beliefs and perceptions that are distorted by our minds and our egoic sense of self. So that seemed to make a lot of sense to me. And it's that interest that came on that day and then led to the whole pursuit of spiritual seeking. That to this day, it's still the exact same interest that it was on the first day. Because everything that I've seen, when the shifts in perception started to happen, of course, I started to realize, not just in theory anymore, but in actuality, through actually perceiving things differently, that there actually was a completely different way of seeing things. And in relationship to a different way of seeing things, what we think of normal is about the most abnormal, twisted, ridiculous way of perceiving things that we could possibly come up with which is why things don't work out too well when we're perceiving through uh, the lenses that most human beings are taught to perceive through. Right? And so it's, it's this exact same interest. It started as an interest and then it became a perception. Ah, that moment of realizing. It's not realizing. Actually, to realize is sort of a misnomer because it implies that you realize something. You know, you, it, it implies like, it's almost like a scientific discovery that you finally discover. You, know, you discover something that somebody else didn't discover. But to realize, to awaken isn't like that. It's not, we don't come into a piece of information that we didn't have before. The only thing that what happens is our perception shifts. That doesn't really require a piece of information for your... If anything, it requires a lot of information to drop away all at once. And then your perception shifts. And things look different. I mean, they look the same, you know. If you were looking at a house beforehand or a car, you were, you'd still see a car after your shift of perception. It's just that it would now be seen in a completely different light. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that shift from conditioned mind to unconditioned consciousness, that's what enlightenment's all about. That's what it's about. To shift from perceiving through the condi our own conditioning of our minds and thoughts and ideas and beliefs, to perceive through those is one type, leads to one type of consciousness. They usually call it ego consciousness, perceiving through ego. But really, it's probably more truthful to say perceiving through your mind. Mm -hmm. And then not perceiving through your mind. Just perceiving directly, seeing things as they are, seeing you as what you are, seeing everything, everybody as what it actually is. Mm -hmm. That's basically what enlightenment is. Mm -hmm. Of course, usually enlightenment is sold through, this is how you'll feel once that has happened. Right? Usually there's a big sales ploy. You know, it's like trying to entice people into enlightenment by saying you will be really happy. You will feel lots of bliss. You will never have a problem again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've all heard the sales pitch for enlightenment, right? I mean, you, you get in spirituality very long. And, and, but, you know, the sales pitch is different depending on who's pitching it. You know, maybe it will, you know, the savior of all humanity or... 
who knows what the sales pitch is, but usually it's the what what I will get out of it. That's what the sales pitch are. Now, what if the sales pitch was, here's something that you'll get nothing out of. You'll put all your energy into, you put all your life into, you put you put all of your heart and your soul and your bones and your marrow into, and when it's all said and done, you'll get goose egg. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> It's like going to a great restaurant and ordering the best thing on the menu and, and they bring you an empty plate. <laughs> Not many people are going to be really thrilled with that, are they? <laughs> so if I was, which I'm not, but if I was to make a sales pitch for enlightenment, that would be my sales pitch. It, it's actually no more true than the other sales pitch. But at least it thin, would thin the crowd a bit, you know? You know like those um, uh, college teachers that tell you like you won't have time for any other class but this one and I will give you five hours of homework and 75% of you will fail this class and none of you want to be here so you should all leave immediately. Have you ever had those kind of college professors? They try to intimidate like everybody, the riffraff out of the room. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, if I was a college professor, that's what I'd be like. <laughs> At least I'd like to think I'd be that way, but fortunately I kind of got this nice guy thing going on. <laughs> yeah, it might get in the way, but I'd like to think that that's the type I'd be. So, I mean, to say that you get nothing out of it, it is just as silly as to say you'll get everything out of it, but but the trajectory and the interest that really this thing, this big word, which is unfortunate, we're stuck with, but if we change the word, we just ruin that word too. You know, it doesn't matter what word we use. But this big word of enlightenment, it just, it is the perception of truth, which is just seen with unclouded vision. That's, that's what it is. Seeing what is instead of what isn't. Have you ever had the experience of being very much in a pattern of thinking? <laughs> no, nobody. Yeah, nobody, no. <laughs> well, that's sure to apply to everybody in the room, huh? <clears throat> But it, you know when you've had something, you ever had something that you really deeply believed and felt very passionate about? Right? Very, very, this is what's true. And then at some other later point in your life, you saw that that was total and absolute nonsense. Have you had that? If you haven't, just get ready. Because <laughs> that's just a warm-up back for enlightenment. But... <laughs> And then you look back and you think, how, how did I ever believe that? Remember that experience? Like, how did, I, how did I ever think that that was what was real, that that was actually true? And you're just mystified. But you remember when you really perceived things through that lens, that everything looked different, didn't it? The whole world was the same. It was just like it always was. But the way you saw it was totally different, right? And then you stop believing in it at some point and the world looks different again. It looks very different without that belief. More than likely you're perceiving through a new belief, but nonetheless, that's, that's sort of a, an example or that little taste of how potent our minds can change our perceptions. Our minds can change our perceptions very, very powerfully. So when the spiritual teacher says the world is illusion, what they really mean is your world that you're creating in your mind only exists in your mind. It's an illusion. It doesn't exist out there. <laughs> 